Now the grouse and claret is a great wee pattern. Now the hook I'm using, this is a camera saw and it's a D270. You can see there it's here. Very strong wee hook. Thread I'm going to be using, it's the uni thread. It's AO in black. Just start at the eye, just work my way down. I want to layer a thread down the shank. And take it all the way down until you're in line with the barb of the hook. And then remove the base piece. Now the tail, I'm just going to use, this is golden pheasant tippet, you can see I've dyed it, it's dyed orange. You can use the natural, it's up to yourself. Now for the tail what I'm going to do is just hold the tips of the feather, come in with the points of the scissors, take about say eight, eight or so fibres, trim them away, remove the main feather. You're looking at the tail length, watch the shank length, just tie on the top, couple of turns to hold. Now trim the waist to the length of the body. There you go. There's your, there's your tail. The rib, I'm just going to use an oval gold tinsel. This is a, a number 14 or small. I'm just going to offer it underneath. Underneath the hook, just lift the thread and then bring the oval tins tinsel underneath and in line with the shank of the hook. Now you tidy this area up first. Just run your thread up. Just make sure these are tied well in. And then come back down ready for your dubbing. I'm just going to use a notch or a claret seals fur. You can use a synthetic fibre like SLF, it works. But you can see there's a ready claret and that's a, the black. Now what I've done here is I've blended both of these together. And that gives you a nice, this nice mix here. The mix. So that would be a, like a fiery claret if it was SLF. Dub it onto your thread. Slide it up. Now I've got it caught and then I can then tighten up if I want and wind to get some sort of shape. You put it on as loose as you want and as tight as you want. So what you'll be up. Look a nice, nice body with it. Yeah, I'm going to put the wing on first and then the hackle once I bring, once I bring the rib up. So you can do it the other way, you can put the hackle in, then the wing, it's up to yourself. Now you're looking four to five turns of the rib. It's fine. Nice and tight, make sure it's tied on. Put a wee bit of wax on my thread, just give me a bit more grip. And carry down, just basically tidying things up, ready for your wing and your hackle. The hackle, or the, sorry, the wing I'm going to be using. The tail feathers are normally used, uh, and basically the wings are grouse and claris, but I, nobody, I don't really like them too well, but this is the wing of the grouse, and these are the, like the secondary feathers, the small feathers. These are ideal for wings. Now I've already been working away, I've tied that fly I showed you now, I've got the other half sitting. Now what you do is just basically bring them together. Let's just line up the ends, just bring them 90 degrees near enough from the stem or to the tips are lined up. Just try and get them to slightly marry together, they will come together. Hold the tips, tear it away from the feather. And there we are, that's giving you enough to form the wing. Now you, what you can do is, I, I fold these feather fibres in themselves. So this is the inside of the feather that you're seeing, and I just roll it to the inside. You'll give it three turns or so. And there's your wing. The length, you're looking short of the tail. Now it's quite a flat surface, the, the double is going to sit quite... So slightly up, but don't worry because I'm going to put the hack on front. This just blends it in together. There's a couple of pinching loops here just to make sure it's tied on. And there's the wing. We can trim away the, the excess then. Again, we can tidy this up, make sure it's well tied in. 
front of the hackle. I'm going to use a dyed black hen. It's a Chinese hen. Now you can use you can use a claret or a natural brown. It's up to yourself. Now I don't. I want the hackle length a wee bit long than normal. I like it to swim well. When you're looking towards the barb, these feathers are not very big. You're not going to get many turns out of these feathers. Uh, getting to the end of this cape, so not got a great choice of feathers. So maybe it's yeah, a good one. What we do is just, you can just draw back some of these, the fluff out of the way. You can catch in the tip of the hackle with a small pair of hackle pliers. There we are, just draw it back so we can tie this in. So we catch in with two or three turns down, draw back the tip, come back up, just slide my fingers back, and this will should reveal the tip of the hackle. And what I like to do is break it off. Now I'm going to use my hackle pliers so you can see better what I'm doing. Just draw these fibres back. Now you're only going to get two to three tons of hackle out of these, so but that's plenty. That's enough. So one turn in front of the other, drawing the fibres back as you go. Just the thread. There you go. Just follow it up with the thread. Now I'm going to put two or three turns in. Give the hackle pliers. Now you can fold this back, which I like to do because then it really tucks it in. Just form a head basically tidying up. There's a the tip of the hackle there, now we can easily break that off. And that's your grouse and claret itself. Now you can, with a sea trout, you put a wee jungle cock eye in it. Just highlights the that area, I mean, it's a, they do like to see an eye. Uh, I find it works extremely well. Now, obviously, two eyes about the same size. Now, you can tie them in together, or you can tie them individually. One, it's up to yourself. Now, what I'm going to do is tie them in together, so I'm lining them up both up, just to make sure they're the same length. Draw back the fibres either side that I don't need, you can tear them away. You may tear the hackle away at the ends, but don't worry, you can still tie them in. I'll just do that so you can see. And then one on top of the other, I mean, one on either side of the wing. And then just sit them on the top, and spread them down either side, just take your time. A wee bit fiddly with the double. You do jag your finger at times. Just uh, quite that double that was jungle cock eye, so I'm just going to take my time. Go back, get it to sit where you want. Just needs to get down a wee bit further. Nice and tight. Now, what I'm going to do here is put a wee bit of wax on my thread. Just make sure it's not going to pull out. Check the length of the jungle cock. This one's a wee tad long, so you can pull it. It's the right length. Take your time. Now, what I'm going to do here is come down these ends. I'm just going to fold them back. They'll never pull out, they'll be really strong. Tidy the head area up. Thread. Now I'm going to come in and cut the waist of the jungle cock away. This side, come in on this side. Take your time when you're doing this. There we go. That's it. As I say, tidy the head up. Come in and wet finish, always keeping things nice and tight. A better fly if you do that. Trim the thread away. So we quick look, see how things are sitting. Now what I'm going to do here, get some super glue for speed. I'm just going to put some super glue down all the way around. 
Now this will set really quick. Allow it to dry. And it doesn't take long, then you can coat it with varnish. A really shiny head, strong head. Yeah, nice shape and that, so you do. Uh, it's a good wee fly, a good wee pattern.